Welcome in, guys. This is uh, Isaac Signs. We've got Coach Holt joining us today uh, for a little bit of a chat to get to share some of your background, Coach. I know that you come from a basketball family. You played collegially. So we're going to get into all that good stuff. So let's go ahead and start with topic number one. Okay, so when did you start playing the game? Who fueled your passion for the game of basketball? Well, um, you know, I was pretty young when I picked up a basketball because my dad uh, was the high school boys coach at the high school that I attended, Bath High School in Lima, Ohio. And um, so I was around it very early. And my family lived on a uh, farm where we actually had a half court in our, our barn. And uh, that's kind of who's your like. But uh, growing up in Ohio, that's... Uh, it, it was awesome because we would play a lot of pickup games in that gym. And my dad certainly fueled my passion for the game. And then uh, my high school coach was the second, is the second winningest coach ever in Ohio um, high school history for girls basketball. So her influence, her teaching me the game, um, just obviously that was a big part of my life and, and she was a great coach and a great motivator. And it just taught me a lot as I, you know, become a coach myself. Well, now let's talk a little bit about your coaching career. We know that you started and, and I know you spent some time in Ohio. So why don't you go ahead and, and talk about that process? Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I played at Ohio university and, um, and then afterwards, I, you know, I just wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I had a, my teaching degree, um, so I could have gone that route at the high school level. But uh, I had the opportunity to uh, get an, an, really, it was kind of an internship because uh, it wasn't a paid position. So it was a volunteer situation at Xavier University. And at the time back then, they didn't have a second and a third assistant and a video coordinator and a basketball operations uh, person. They just basically had the head coach and one full-time assistant. So I served as kind of a second assistant and got really a great experience. Um, and while I worked for Xavier in, in coaching, I also uh, helped out with the Cincinnati Reds. So that was a paid position that I could uh, work, live, <laughs> make a living, and then also you know be in the basketball side of things at Xavier. Uh, I was just at Xavier for one season and then I got a full-time job at Radford University in Virginia. That was my first full-time assistant coaching position. And I was there for six years. And then in my seventh year at, at Radford, um, our head coach had taken a different job. And so they promoted me to be, just, just for a year, the interim head coach. Um, and we, we played pretty well and did well. And I was able to get Big South Coach of the Year. Um, because we were picked to finish last and we finished third. So, so that being my first head coaching experience, that was pretty awesome. And then um, I went from there to Wichita State and I was an assistant at Wichita State for four. And then I went from Wichita State to Colorado State. Um, and I went as the recruiting coordinator. I wanted to take that position and I uh, was there for just one season. And then a similar thing happened. I was, um, I was promoted to being the head coach and I ended up being there for uh, five years as the head coach at Colorado State. And then um, from there, I came down to UTSA and uh, worked for the coach that I worked for at Radford. He was actually here, uh, Coach Lekonzak was the head coach here at UTSA. And uh, so I became his assistant again, which that's kind of an unusual occurrence. I didn't think that would happen. And um, so then I was here and then obviously had the opportunity to be uh, promoted to the head coach. I'm assuming coach that you had other options before coming to UTSA. What was it about the program, about the university and about the leadership that captured your attention? Well, you know, I think you, you know, in this profession, you always want to be with people um, that, you know, you believe in and that you can be loyal to. And, you know, I had worked with Coach Lekonzak before, so that certainly was a big part of it. But then on top of that, um, you know, San Antonio is just a, an awesome city. I had been here a couple times before I actually lived here. And, um, you know, weather's nice and the people in Texas are great. Um, the talent in Texas is, is, is phenomenal. I mean, everybody across the country recruits to Texas. So, um, and then just, you know, again, just having this opportunity to 
to be down here in the south and and to just be in some warm weather i you know i don't have to deal with snowflakes here um so uh just a nice area nice campus and a growing university you know very young and uh, just the opportunity to kind of help a program take a step in a in a new conference which at the time we were had moved from the WAC to conference usa now to briefly recap the 2019-20 season, I mean, we you had an infusion of two freshmen, a lot of young players that came together, you know, not to mention there was some some injury uh, issues. And so you were consistently changing lineups, especially earlier during the season. So coach, just talk about some of your takeaways and your optimism with the group that you have right now. Yep. Well, I would say that, uh, you know, going into the season, um, you know, that we knew that there would be a lot of new faces filling a lot of new roles and you never, you're never sure how that's all going to work out. I think that the loss of Tyja Hawkins um, early on in this, you know, before we really got into the season too much, that was a big blow because obviously this was a proven player that um, had done well in Conference USA, a rebounder, a scorer, a defender inside. Um, so that was that was tough, but um, you know I think that overall, if I had to look back at the season, one thing that we definitely got uh, accomplished is there's just a shift in the culture. Very positive um, kids that are working hard and want to be coached, um, and so that's that's the kind of culture you you know you definitely want to want to build and want to have. And we were able to make that switch, and certainly got to give that credit to our coaching staff for just working with these kids and then with the student athletes that they have really bought in. You know, in a year where you don't have a lot of wins, to have that culture shift, that's, that's pretty exciting because you, you, we all know what wins do for a team. It just, you know, builds your confidence, it builds your enthusiasm. So, you know, I think the fact that that shifted is, is, is awesome. You know, we were very injured this year, um, but we were, you know, we were the second youngest team in the country with injuries on top of that. Just, just kind of made it hard to get in any type of rhythm. Um, and, you know, certainly in practice, we had to kind of just maintain until we could get to the next game so that we would have, you know, some healthy bodies. Uh, but, but through all of that, you know, I felt like really each kid improved. I could go right down the roster and I think each kid got better. Um, and then certainly, you know, Michaela Woods being such a bright spot in, in becoming an all, um, all freshman team in Conference USA. That's a, you know, phenomenal thing for our program that hadn't happened. Um, and then, you know, we had other freshmen and other people in the program just, just step up when they were healthy. And I thought they did a, a, a good job of just hanging in there because that's tough when you're young and then you're, uh, you're dealing with that kind of adversity. And you preach a lot about resiliency. You preach a lot about not giving up and continuing to fight to the very end. And as you saw the season unfold, you saw a lot of your younger players really start to take up a little bit more of a leadership role. You started seeing a little bit of team chemistry really grow. You talk about changing the culture. So what makes you excited about what this group of players can do, especially as you move into off-season training in the coming months? Well, certainly, um, you know, our, our push through tough things and adversity didn't always end up in getting a lot more wins. But I think that I never felt like the team, you know, there weren't a lot of moments where they did give up. They just kept fighting. And that kind of effort and that kind of mental approach is going to pay off. And so as we go into a new year, um, you know, we had players that like with Elena Blanding's a great example of a player that we really, you know, didn't know that if we would use her that much in games. And she got quite a bit of game experience, her last game being just a tremendous uh, effort. So I think each kid that was here and in the program is now going to be able to take that experience. They know what to expect. And now we're no longer going to be the second youngest team in the country. We're going to have game experience with healthy bodies, with the new players that we have coming into the program. You know, I think it's definitely going to be a better year next year. And lastly, Coach, to, to round out the first introduction episode, talk a little bit about the Roadrunner faithful and the people that show up to the home games and provide your team with that extra energy boost. 
you know, we're, we are so thankful for our fans and we can't say it enough. And, um, you know, we, we look up in the stands and we see those, those uh, fans that are there game in and game out. Um, we know that we have great kids and, and we know that as they connect with our fans that we're going to draw more and more fans because we have great kids that want to want to represent UTSA in the best possible way. And, you know, I think when we were, are in this time right now with the with the coronavirus and everybody's kind of stuck at home, um, I think it gives you time to really reflect. And one thing we are very thankful for is we're thankful for this university, we're thankful for our leadership, and we're very thankful for the fans and the support, not just financially, but those that are able to, uh, to be in the stands in the, at, at games. That, that means a lot to all of us. Good word there from Coach Holt. Well, again, we appreciate your time, Coach, for joining us. We know right now it's an interesting time. We got a lot uh, going on, but certainly sending my thoughts and prayers to all, to all those people who are dealing with the virus and just continue to hope that everybody's staying safe. So, again, Coach, thanks for, for taking the time today. Yeah, thanks for having me.